Prince William and Kate one year ago. Two billion people around the world celebrated their marriage. Since then, their popularity has only grown. They are Britain's most famous couple. They've been credited with re-energizing British monarchy. And they're taking a starring role in the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. For more, let's go to Charlie Daggett at Buckingham Palace in London. Charlie, good morning. Good morning to you, Jeff. You know, I've been here for more than 20 years now, and I've never known the royal family to be this popular. In fact, they've been downright unpopular in the past. And even as this country is in the grips of a double-dip recession, they're finding plenty of cause for celebration. The royals are on a roll. They're enjoying the kind of approval ratings that would make a presidential candidate giddy. And they can thank their two biggest stars for the bump. Well, as far as the Queen's concerned, I mean, uh, William's marriage to Kate was an absolute blessing for the monarchy because they're young, they're golden, they're hope for the future. Since their wedding last year, the golden couple have blossomed even further, developing a certain sense of celebrity not seen in royal circles since the days of William's mother, Princess Diana. Some credit the Kate effect for the swell in popularity, the attractive and photogenic new addition who's as comfortable on the red carpet as off it. What is clear is that it's having an effect on the rest of the family, too. Prince Charles doing an impromptu weather forecast on TV. Uh, this afternoon it'll be cold, wet and windy across most of Scotland. Then trying his hand at DJing. We'll see if the Fresh Prince of Buckingham Palace gets busy at his mother's jubilee party. Which brings us to Her Majesty, especially this week. It's all about the Queen's 60 years on the throne. William and Kate may be the shining stars, but in the days ahead, they'll play a supporting role. And it certainly helps when you've got uh, young blood coming in, weddings, that sense of renewal, resurgence. When a, a family's on, a, on an up, uh, then it, everybody feels better about it. The country is already in the grips of jubilee fever, and even the portraits are larger than life, much larger than life in this case. Uh, there's one hanging on the banks of the River Thames. It's bigger than a football field. It's 110 meters by 70 meters. It weighs two tons. Uh, it will serve as the backdrop for a flotilla headed down the Thames, a thousand ships, all led by Her Majesty the Queen next Sunday. Charlie Daggett in London. Charlie, thank you. Also joining us this morning from our London Bureau is Robert Jobson. He is the author of William and Kate, The Love Story. And great to have you with us, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. So is this all Will and Kate, the newfound popularity in the royal family? I think so to some extent. The wedding was an incredible success. Everyone wanted to see her, particularly Catherine in her dress. And also you've got this teamwork between the two of them. William, of course, being Diana's son, it has the Diana effect too. So, yeah, they're a star couple. But also with the Queen's Jubilee coming up, everyone has a time to reflect on her. And now all the Brits are apparently saying, or at least some of them are saying, they'd rather see Will take the crown over Charles. Of course, that can't legally happen. Charles would have to give it up. Is there any chance he would? I really don't think so. I mean, the fact is Charles is the longest serving heir to the throne ever. But the re reality is William and Kate will have a very serious role anyway. When Prince Charles does become king, providing, of course, he, he, he lives long enough, the reality is they will still be the star couple. They will still be the couple that go around the world representing, if you like, as Great Britain's ambassadors abroad. Robert, uh, the, the Queen had at, at times an icy relationship with Diana. Why is it that she's warmed to Kate in such a different way. I think the royal family, and particularly the Queen as well, has learnt the lessons of the past. I think Diana had a really tough time, and she was fighting against Charles. He, he was obviously uh, committing an adulterous relationship, which was difficult. And I don't think anyone really understood the problems Diana faced. I think this time they realised for the outsider, they have to embrace Catherine and Kate to make sure that she understands and that she feels welcome. And they are doing that, going out on jobs with her and showing that they really care. Is the public's love affair here sustainable, Robert? Do you think it'll last? <laughs> well, I've been covering this for about 20 odd years now, and it's a bit of a roller coaster ride. This is the high point. Sometimes uh, they're at that, their popularity. When you have weddings, you have jubilees, babies that are born. I think obviously that's great news for the royal family, but that's as long as they all stay faithful to each other and there's no <laughs> scandals, I think that this will be a good time for the monarchy. And no chinks in the Kate armor yet. She's still uh, performing beautifully, correct? 
Absolutely. When I met her in uh, uh, Canada la uh, a, few week a few months ago, she was in great form. And she's, there's no edge to Kate. She's a really lovely girl. And I think that she's there to support the man she loves. And Prince William, um, together, they look a great couple. And I think they're good news for the future for the British monarchy. Robert Jobson, thank you very much, sir.